Welcome back to Pisces TV with Dr. MB. Let's get started with your reading. Hello, Pisces. We are covering the week of, I think it's the, what is it, April 14th through the 20th, maybe headed into Taurus season. I do have some transit updates. I'll keep those brief for those of my tarot fans that may not subscribe to Horoscope. I will do a separate uh, broadcast for that. So we'll do uh, part two of our Pisces TV broadcast on the transits. Very informative. Jupiter's doing some stuff. Venus is doing some stuff. Mercury and Mars still doing some stuff. But it's a little bit different stuff. <laughs> so you'll notice, um, if not within yourself, possibly in the environment of things kind of like changing around you. So just be mindful of that. Could be the energies. Uh, could be people, uh, personalities, or situations. So we will get started. I do have some of our archetype. Actually, I'm sorry. Alchemy cards here. We have some of the Astro deck present and the infamous Wild Unknown is going to tell us a little bit about the foundation, the present, the hopes, wishes and dreams and any challenges that could come up during the week. So I'd like to start in the foundation. I like this wish fulfillment, contentment, happiness, emotional bliss. I appreciate that since we opened the reading with our Queen of Cups. Concerned about the father of swords so next door, but we're going to talk about that. Loving the will of fortune at the heart of the matter. And Pluto is a serious deal. So the heart of the matter, the situation within itself, this week, this month, this year for some of you, the last two years, the next seven years, uh, it does talk about rebirth, transformation, and regeneration. So be mindful that a lot of us have broken free from past cycles and moving toward financial freedom. There could be some things within the environment based on other transits or other people or within yourself that kind of pull you, you know, we don't want to backslide. So we're going to move away from that type of energy. We'll talk about that, especially when it comes to rejection and boredom. How we respond to that may be very important because Pluto don't come to play. We have air over there with intellectual and inquisitive over here by chaos and Scorpio. So that's that past energy for me. But we'll talk a little bit about it. It says deep, intense, and transformative. We also have Taurus. As we come into Taurus season, that was adorable. I love spirit. Like, we go hand in hand. We so cute together. Uh, followed by 10 that has uh, the number 21 up there. So we got world card energy with the Wheel of Fortune with Taurus and Pluto. So there may be a transformation coming before May. A big one. Over here, we have Jupiter. Love that. Followed by 6. You guys have three sixes and two nines. And when I see six and nine, that gives me cancer, which is why we started out with the mother of cups. So I'm definitely going to talk about what cancer is doing. Don't forget to check out the broadcast on the horoscope and the transits. Okay. But yeah, when I see the yin and the yang or the six and the nine, it talks a lot about balance. Nine swords, nine cups, six swords, six pentacles. And then Jupiter is over here saying, if we do something with these six swords and the six pentacles, we may get a situation momentum your dedication and action may be required our spirit animal for the day is the wolf love that very smart very wise could be troublesome okay sometimes but overall very ancient energy does talk about wisdom and a teacher of some sort over here we have packing up moving on physical labor so for some of you guys moving moving on deciding to you know pack it up had enough of some things and for a lot of you guys it has to do with the past energy or those things that may give you anxiety we're going to set healthy boundaries cut that off and keep a clear focus with that father of swords i like him there all right especially when it comes to where you give and where others give and how much you have to wait and how much they ask for just be mindful of that okay but the mother of cups with the wheel of fortune crossing this nine of cups i like it i i do want to figure out why we have the four of cups with the will of fortune and the six of swords i think that's going to give us a little bit of advice on how we're moving because this rat is moving right back to that pack over there with the ten of wands and i don't i don't i, I favor the ten of wands energy but sitting in it i don't think that uh, will be favorable so i want to see why this rat is moving this way because jupiter is closer to these nine cups uh, than the four cups so we're going to talk a little bit about that now, for my Pisces coming in, we have the 13th, uh, which is today, moving into the 14th. Your offerings, pouring your heart and soul into things um, could be the energy. We do have health and well-being in a good place. Some of us are feeling energetic and very motivated. 
work-related romances could be on the horizon and that's smooth offensive may and i'll tell you about that because of some things that venus are doing but we had a lot of energy that was about momentum business new ideas pushing forward this week has a lot of energy for romance and those of you that aren't interested that's great but those of you that are we'll talk about that i may also do a love reading specifically for venus even though she has a square this week uh, everything should pan out okay <laughs> Your intuitions may be high. Okay, we got the Mother of Cups right there. It also talks about stepping outside of your comfort zone and exploring new horizons. You'll see beyond what's immediately um, viewable or visible, right? So that's a good thing. Sometimes we don't see that. Sometimes we got the glass. And I did see the glass actually at the bottom of the deck when I shuffled out the alchemy cards. So those royal colored glasses, I don't think they're going to be on this week. It talks about embrace and adventure, renewal and possibility for love. Some of you guys may be drawn to very mysterious people. And in your careers, it talks about thinking about your career in the new and exciting way without being afraid and thinking outside of the box. Now, some of us that may have uh, taken action toward grand ideas, started new things, you could be experiencing some of the first hiccups with those things. And that's probably why the seven of pentacles was in your reading yesterday where it talks about the details and the moon phases and some things that may happen with the new moon and a full moon and the crescent moon and a winning and the waxing moon. So be sure that if you're into those type of uh, updates that you look into the moon readings as well as the horoscope, which I will try to keep posted for you guys. OK, now thinking about your career, your unique perspective may um, lead you to success. That's a great thing. This week, your financial outlook is positive. You may find unexpected money or a windfall from a project. And here we have Pluto and you have windfall energy, unexpected energy right here with the Wheel of Fortune in the center. And that's possibly why it's so close to that six of pentacles, that nine of cups and the six of swords. So I really love that. Now, moving forward into the 14th, for some of you guys that may be today, the moon is in cancer. OK, so um no financial restrictions. Those of you that are into moon magic or want to go shopping or whatever, there aren't any advisories against restrictions and finances for Pisces. So that's a go. All right. Get as much done as possible. Strike while you ha while the iron is hot. You guys, that's crazy. You did have the iron card um, in a reading this week. The iron card is also from the alchemy deck. So that is super cute. Okay. It talks about um, it's a favorable time for training and teaching. Those of you that may have children or maybe teachers or whatever the case may be, it's just a favorable time to for it to be favorable. OK, so squeeze some of that stuff in there. But like I said, there is a square with Venus. However, there's a trine with Saturn and Mars. So that's why the working, the being diligent, you know, uh, could go hand in hand. If for some of us, that love section isn't just 100 percent there yet. Now, Mercury switches gears and rises in Pisces, which talks about business deals and job opportunities again. There is also a first quarter moon this week that could put some into a crisis energy where you're made aware of how your actions, your past actions may have affected you or those close to you through trial and error. So we do have that nine of swords here in the walking physical life. All right, from past, present, or future situations. But Pluto will transform that for you. And there could be some regenerative energy in it if you can't shake it. It always talks about being of service and do something for someone else. Without expectations could take you out of that nervous energy, okay? Now, the sun will move from Aries into Taurus like later this week. And when it does, Mercury and Venus enter Aries and Mars in Pisces. We may uh, be more impulsive. And have the urge to initiate things, to be innovative, and, and for us to come first. So that self-love energy and coming first may be on the rise. Now, while that may benefit my singles, for some of you that are in relationships, I'm, it's a transit now. I'm just reporting the news. I'm not trying to speak it into your lives. But keep in mind that there could be some frustrations or turbulence with women. So if you are in a relationship um, or sisters, mothers, things of that nature, just be mindful of that. Now, Jupiter and Uranus have a conjunction later this week um, th where there could be like a culture shift, um, a personal revolution. And an example of that, which I don't know if it's too soon to speak of it, 
you know, I don't want to trigger anyone. But just think about 2018, right? Before all of the chaos, how our lives were and how different your life may be now. That's the type of um, culture change that Jupiter and Uranus, because Uranus is, is big and, and Jupiter is about going hard. So that's the, that's the, that's the type uh, of change that could transpire uh, this week. I don't want to see anything like another pandemic. Uh, but it just it just talks about how we had a shift like worldwide, nationwide um, in the culture. And so keep that in mind. All right. Uh, next, we have uh, the moon, I think, moves into Virgo at some point this week, too, where um, it, there's a trine with uh, Jupiter and Taurus. OK, so very favorable transit brings social success, financial opportunities positive vibes and outlooks uh philanthropy type energy so that's why i like that six of pentacles there activities um philanthropic activities okay so yes i want to Im be involved in that so if y'all feeling giving make sure you hit the like button it's free keep the channel alive thank you comment down below and i do love all the treats donations or readings that you guys book totally appreciate you because without you there's no me all right and I'll, I'll give myself, okay? So I'll, I'll let you know what specials I have or what raffles we'll do for the month of May, okay? Because I'm a stifler like that. It's like, why would I do it in the middle of April? So, yeah, we'll talk about that. Getting geared up for the summer solstice, I'm going to have some super dope products for you guys. Um, at the least, the candles and oils should be ready, but we'll talk about that. So, anyway, attracting others, okay, is a great energy, uh, during that time, going on dates and meeting your future spouse. So that's that lovey energy with the Virgo moon and then the trine with Jupiter and Taurus. I love that. Increased attention and perspective. All right. You're going your own way, looking for new methods of doing things. Great opportunities for creativity and adversity. OK. Campaigns geared at women you may see in the collective um, being favorable. So just be mindful of that. But like I said, as the campaign and marketing gears toward girl power, there could be intimate issues with women for your wives, sisters, mothers, daughters, etc. So be mindful. Now, also this week, I believe the um, of the moon in Virgo, of course, has an opposition with Mars and Pisces, and it can make you a little bit belligerent and hasty or even angry and I know sometimes because the queen of cups cares about her and everything around her and it's just like oh it's her job I know the father of swords could be a little bit irritated by those small details a little bit insensitive as would my queen of cups in reverse and I love that with the wild unknown there are particular characters that she just put in shadow have you guys noticed that I love that like for a new reader for an advanced reader doesn't matter I love that she reminds us like while some things have a more upbeat approach to interpretation, I just like seeing that shadowy background on some of the cards to remind me. Right. Because in esoteric teaching, the four of cups can sometimes talk about having more than enough and luxury. But in shadow is boredom, rejection, like just the not so good feeling that's amplified in the five of cups. So keep those kind of things in mind where you do have a little bit of shade, but it is balanced out with light and we got a little bit of color and even a rainbow. So it should be pretty happy for us. Okay. Great opportunities um, uh, here either way. Okay. It talks about passions. They may occur and can be uh, separations. Like I said, so for some of you that may have issues with your feminine counterparts or intimate relationships, those situations could even lead to temporary situations. So it'd be like, you go in the living room, sleep on the couch. I'm going to stay in the room or I'm going to go to my mama's house. I don't know. Moon and Virgo opposition with Neptune and Pisces. It does talk about a little bit of that dreamy energy where the visions are grander and feel like you're godly, right? Could be feeling really good. But your imagination may take you places that don't make sense and you might turn to other things okay to feel better whatever those other things are for you so just keep in mind where it seems like this four of cups energy with this nine of swords energy could amplify into that five of cups that i just mentioned all right express yourself creatively music arts do things like that to avoid the melancholy okay so jupiter and taurus conjunction with uranus and taurus talks about a more cheerful time where we're open-minded resurfaces the desires for harmony um in us a love partner, okay, or a love partners may be at the center of the 
interest, okay? And we're feeling romantic, in a romantic mood, and can spread, spend hours with our partner. So where there could be separations uh, for some, on some days, there may be some intimacy and coming together for others on other days, okay? Now, with the Astro Cards... You have the first house that talks about self, body, and preservation. And then I look like we got Aries here. So that's super dope. First house, Aries, self, body, and presence coming in with this father of swords. So Aries energy or the transits that are affected by Aries with this father of swords definitely talks about being insensitive, um, a little bit of irritation, and needing to be a little bit more patient. All right. So be a diligent, humble leader. Okay, general or whatnot. Develop plans. Okay, instead of being overly imaginative and dreamy when it comes to taking care of yourself and others around you, or that may be the anxiety about the things from the past that are haunting you, some previous decisions, it just talks about standing firm on the decisions you made. It'll be all right. Okay, and then moving away into calmer waters, which talks about financial freedom with this Six of Pentacles. I love that, as well as that Four of Cups. Okay, okay. Now, Gemini, um, why do I sound like excited? Like I've been running track or something like, yeah, okay, we're going to get it to it. All right. So Gemini, for some of you guys, if you have it in the first house, uh, could provide a little bit of insight to something more gated toward your horoscope um, and something that could be like in the works for you. But it also talks about Pisces altogether. So how Pisces can sometimes be affected by that uh wind energy it talks about expression and how others see you so just be mindful while you are feeling the momentum and could be a very loving conscious individual they could see you as a stern rigid insensitive motherfucker so just be mindful of that it talks about authority and responsibilities we did talk about that some transits that involve mars or aries sometimes it could be overwhelming or to have some anxieties about how we're going to get things covered. It talks about paying bills and the different cycles that we go through and all. Of, and some of you are saying, well, fuck all these transits with everything we have going on in life. I feel you. That's why the two of pentacles is here with a little bit of juggling. And it came with the clarifier of the conjunction. And the conjunction is favorable because I do believe Jupiter is up in there. And it talks about synergy, unity, and integration. So this is the momentum, the foundation of this will of fortune that leads to this transformation lies within your ability to juggle a bit. Some of us coming out of financial embarrassment and keeping our focus on how we, things, how we want things to be is what's going to help you move forward into that financial freedom, okay? Now, for some of you, it also talks about possible mates, right? We got this sweet, loving mother of cups, or this person could be a cancer. And that person may be very professional, ambitious, well-prepared, but also keep in mind that they could be also holding back some truths, very unjust, or it even talks about cruelty the way he's sitting here staring at me. Because some of our more creative readings have pointed to some dishonesty. The Queen of Wands was coming up a whole bunch. And, you know, in the Three of Cups, I do believe the archetype of the Mother of Cups is one of those sisters. Now, the gossipy one that turned her back on them was in the other reading. And this could be speaking to the person that got their backs turned on by this real cruel individual who was unjust and held back some truth. You just wanted to know the truth. That's all you wanted. And then kind of move away and slid off. Hopefully that was you that moved away and slid off. OK. Now, singles, this card may mean that you'll meet someone um that like i said is very confident and well educated so we we don't want to be combative we we don't want to be confrontational we want to come in with that mother of cups energy you know that you're good at right we want to try that because i know with this queen of swords energy in the physical with this in between and then this two of pentacles here with the juggling and some of us may have learned past lessons when it comes to reciprocity what we give and what we receive and understanding our value um Get them a chance. Okay, I would say just get them a chance. For all of my career finance people, being the master at a certain skill and being on high demand. So when I tell you guys you're going to be booked and busy, it's not just something I say because it sounds good. I'm not good at saying shit just because it sounds good to a, to a, to a, what is it? Um, to a detriment that just ain't my thing. So never worked well with me. Not going to start today. The beautiful thing is those of you that may have been workaholics, I do feel that working through the energy to avoid the healing, to avoid the 
the boredom those things could have a friction in your energy and something that you're manifesting because i'm seeing this ten of wands with this nine of swords by chaos and resin and i know resin has something to do with something still being in there like something being preserved right so something being preserved could also tell us to preserve the communication or ideas we have and focus on the conscious and subconscious energy and getting over this anxiety because i have seen some reports that said pisces chill you know low key this week the other week we was out there and being seen and shining on them and as you can see you got so many readings talking about haters and liars and deception and all that kind of stuff and i wouldn't i wouldn't dim my light for a little bit of confrontation but the transits do say move in silence stop talking to them and let them uh sabotage themselves okay because some of the readings did point to a sabotager possibly being in your environment now those of you with this past position of the nine of swords be mindful worrying about the past thinking about the past examining karmic events from the past next to this wheel of fortune i think pluto is here for a reason so i'm gonna listen to it okay i fool with pluto okay and as we talk about these nine of swords let's just really get to that i may take some clarifiers depending on how much time we have left and some bonus cards but i know a lot of you still want to go over the archetype cards if you're not for familiar with them to see what insight um, they provide so sleepless nights for some of us boredom um, a feeling of you know my star seeds sometimes have that homesickness want to go home it does talk about possibly getting us in our feelings a little bit so one thing i do appreciate about this king of swords is that with the with the strict um goal setting and planning to the present that that could keep us out of our feelings and out of the past if we use our intelligence all right our presence in the present moment ourself and in our bodies okay i've been through that though even though i think i had one of them weed brownies which is totally legal in california and i i that's the that's the craziest feeling i ever had it wasn't nothing extra now y'all i'm just extra and goofy and i don't normally consume uh things like that but i had a little bit and <laughs> i think i told y'all this so those of you that are like familiar with pisces tv i'm telling you for the first time in my life i sat on the couch and i was like tripping about being in a body i was having a panic attack or be having i was anxious i had anxiety just like i was in shock like what the fuck is going on here i was like i was literally tapping on my leg like i felt my i was my soul for a moment dealing with looking at me from the inside out in a body i know it sounds crazy okay so don't judge me but i thought that was still a unique experience because i wasn't like overly trippy it ain't like it was some i don't know whatever they put in drugs in there it was just brownie and cannabis that's it but for someone who <laughs> who don't normally consume stuff like that um i just appreciated the experience because myself was really shocked and I was, I felt trapped in a body. And I thought that was fucking dope. It was scary for the moment. But as you can see, I'm still talking about it. And that was like three, four years ago. So the Nine of Swords gives you energy like that at times. And also talks about overwhelmed by negative emotions. I don't like that so close to the Mother of Cups. So just be mindful of that. Because then you got the Four of Cups right below. And all of this energy is pointing to the past. So if we're stuck in the past, dealing with feelings of despair. Or that we're on the wrong path in life. Pluto says that it is a perfect opportunity with the transits that are happening or just divine timing, right? Because Father Time is sitting right up here in the first house. Every season, I guess, is one of the best seasons to transform. I never knew that. So shout out to my brain expanding this year. I'm saying things I've never said before and learning things I never knew. Okay. Time for change. There it is. Time for change. Let's do it before May because even though I said that we're going into tourist season, a lot of the cards are still pointing to Aries, so we're not going to move too fast. All right. Some of you guys just had something to do with stress and night shifts. All of my mental health workers may see an increase in their patience with their fears and dealing with that. We also have to learn to love and accept who we are. And some of us who just aren't happy or feeling the rejection from past situations, they have not accepted them. 
and made peace with them and moved away from them, which is the advice and also the outcome for some of you that haven't made that decision or have. Shout out to y'all. Definitely appreciate that. Okay. So now the foundation, the present. We got two pentacles. I love the two pentacles. My favorite two of pentacles card is in the fountain tarot where that man is coming out the water because it does talk about momentum. Even though in shadow, it could represent some financial embarrassment and juggling the demands of life since we already talked about being overwhelmed and tired the fuck over here from responsibilities, old shit coming up. Like, what the fuck? I'm trying to move on forward like they told me to and be innovative and exciting and do different stuff. But this old stuff pulling at me, baby, keep moving. That's what I do. I would let it tug. And I would keep pulling like one of them football players that's trying to make it to that goal line with three or four team players pulling on their shoes. Okay? The MVP going to make it cross that line. Be the MVP today. All right? So outside of investing money into different projects with the two of pentacles, some of you guys, that's where your luck is going to come from. Just stay the course because we also had some readings for Pisces that talked about starting things and then I already getting bored and tired of them and going into some other shit or not starting them all together because it's self-sabotage okay so just be mindful of that for you black me this is the card saying it ain't my fault all right some of y'all may be playing with some big money and others of you it's just two jobs those of you that it's not about finance or money it just talks about having fun and working on many projects to avoid boredom so if you're not escaping anything us water signs can do that i don't see anything wrong with working on multiple projects to to not be bored or to work through your tense energy right but if you are escaping um going into old cycles refusing to see certain patterns and things in people or in the environment and then like yapping off doing something um to to try to stay constructive it's like doing the work and the inner work may be more important than the facade uh that some of us can be working through okay but if you've outgrown your job um that's all right it might be a time for a transformation of some sort and for the collective being disorganized losing documents things like that could come up so just be mindful of phone calls and business arrangements and situations that you have in your domestic life that um some things get overlooked never sent um and could lead to miscommunication so just be nice all right um let's see here what else we got we got the two of pentacles rolling into the wheel of fortune i know we all want to talk about that i actually want to take some clarifiers on the wheel of fortune because it's one of my favorite cards and it could mean so many things but i feel like it's just a change in the cycles for a lot of you I feel like it's a change in time and it also talks about the transits or for some of us based on past decisions, the transits could produce uh, some financial turbulence, but it looks like there will be help and support just when you need it. So I do appreciate that. And it also talks about my students. Uh, some of you, well, this particular card doesn't talk about the students, but it came up for Pisces and I just wanted to say that uh, for some of you where it comes to outside work or being a student, um, being busy, juggling jobs, juggling work, juggling life, juggling relationships, something has to give. And all of us can sit back and ask ourselves because we already talked about putting your life and soul and love into projects this week. It could just be within you to do, feeling very generous, but moving toward financial freedom and away from anxieties, people who had their foot one foot in, one foot out situations where you've had your foot one foot in one foot out we're making some decisions and sticking to them because even though this is the will of fortune i'm seeing that little bitty bird from the judgment card right sitting right there like it's gonna it was here watching and then it's gonna be there by the time we get to 20 it's here at 10 and it's gonna be there when we get to 20 like you remember <laughs> remember right so that's uh that's real interesting or whatever uh, others of you, when it comes to the Wheel of Fortune, I like to see it. And then I brought up the Judgment card, which will make it so much more serious. But right now, we're just going to leave it where it's at. I'm not going to make it anything bigger than what it is. But it's a big destiny card in the tarot deck. What is meant to be is meant to be. And the tarot, when the Wheel of Fortune turns up, it means that the events and people in your life are in your life due to it being pre-decided destiny. 
So for some of you, we have Libra. We have Gemini. We have Cancer. We also have Taurus. And some other signs. We got Scorpio. Scorpio twice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We, got all the, we got all the water signs for sure, sure. Might even have some Aquarius up in there. Okay. So just be mindful, okay, for your luck and your fortune. Um, hit the top of the wheel and move forward. Okay. For some of us, the stagnating energy is definitely not going to give you a good omen with the wheel of fortune. So we can't be stagnant. Work through the night. Get some shit done. When you bored, when you ain't got nothing else to do, every season is saying if you want those seeds to come into fruition, put as many seeds in the ground right now as you can. Okay. Now, the wheel might not be turning much for some of us. Change could be eluding some of us. And if it's like, well, what some of us would it do that to? The stubborn ones that are refusing to change, that aren't teachable, that are cold and rigid and lack empathy, and possibly creating the chaos or unintentionally hurting people because that came up in some of the transits. I had some people mess up some paperwork for my business, and it was detrimental. I'm talking about two days of me having to redo, and it involved money. And when I talked to the person... I was like, baby, can you respond a little bit sooner to situations and emergencies? Oh, I'm so sorry. I was this, that, 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 this, this, that, that. And I was like, you don't, it wasn't their fault. So thankfully, I'm growing. Okay, I'm a professional. I'm reading these transits. I'm putting it in my back pocket and just trying to be my best self. Oh, me would have talked about that person's mama and insulted their whole lifestyle and how they were imbeciles. I don't know. I would have found a way, right? But that's petty, unnecessary, and I'm older, okay, now, I'm better. And I was just, like, real patient with them, but deep down inside, I'm like, do you know how much you cost me? Like, that could get you cussed out, bro. Like, that people be lucky, bro. I'm telling you. So, anyway, just be mindful of that. Uh, Mercury retrograde or not, it's other transits that's adding to that shit, and just be mindful. Being in touch with your destiny, freedom, and adapting to change. So we talked about financial freedom for a lot of us. And those are the people who are adapting to change. They got this conjunction with Jupiter. That's going to bless your game. So just be mindful of that. Moving up in the world. Positive changes. Getting what you want. Now keep in mind, you guys, that you have Pluto, which is big, one of the big brothers. And the Wheel of Fortune in the heart of the matter. In the center of the reading. Also collaborating with the present. I got a lot of lotion on there. Sorry about that. Okay. Feeling a deep connection to people and places. My mother of cups will feel like that. Discovering your life purpose for some of you guys. See, I told you when that little bird come up and I start thinking about the judgment card and we're talking about the wheel of fortune. That is huge for soul purpose and why I'm on this planet. Some of you could be thinking about that. Others of you could receive a promotion. I mean, you may have to take the later shift because they get the shift differential, but, and you don't want to do that, but it's more money. And I think overall, you could be content with it. Now, a lack of progress and going backwards could lead to misfortune. So just be mindful of that. If you done cut some cords and it's like, I done got out a generational curse and the twin flame spell and the, all this voodoo, who do you do? And I'm not talking about on a surface level of, yeah, I made my decision. I blocked them, but you're still watching readings, wondering how they feel about you. I think the Cosmo uh, gods and giants look at stuff like that. So just be mindful about going backwards. I don't think going backwards is favorable because it puts us back into chaos with this Scorpio energy and this air that I'm going to get to. And stop blabbing off, but we got a whole week to crunch in. Like I said, I will do something more toward just the transit so you can hear about that energies and not take it personal to feel like it has anything to do with you or the people in your environment specifically causing these matters. But just to hear how sometimes what the above is doing, that could have an influence on the below. And sometimes this could take place or, you know, be played out in our lives. That's all. Okay. So I'm not, uh, I don't ever try to claim anything unless it's some shit you want into your life. I'd be like, wish fulfillment. Yeah, hit the like button if you want generosity and help and support when you need it. Yes. But I wouldn't dare like offer some other shit into your life because hopefully, you know, you don't want that for yourself either. Now, outside of that, what else we got? Let me get to these oracle cards. 
uh, real quick. Generosity, moving away uh, from turmoil, financial freedom, and ultimately I feel that there's a subconscious opportunity or thought of wish fulfillment. The wish fulfillment may come by others. So if you said, I want to be a billionaire, and your wish fulfillment comes through generosity from another or a philanthropist, you could marry one. You could work for one. One of them could have a child that goes to school with you or y'all bump into each other at the grocery store or meet each other online. Who knows? So it's not that you you've worked hard. Yes. But some of you, you don't you may not have to work hard if your wish fulfillment may come through a generous offer that allows you to move out of you know, into financial freedom. And this could be from this very professional stern motherfucker up here. Could be. Maybe Aries. I know some rich Aries, like literally. He ain't wrapped too tight and I wouldn't ask the motherfucker for a dime. But he half ass famous. And people say he rich, but I don't believe it. So moving on. He could be. That ain't my business. I don't give a fuck about that. Um <laughs> moving moving on beyond that. Because I know a few celebrities. Like, I came out here to California. I've met a few. I'll just say that. And a lot of them are weirdos. Uh, Some of them are very amazing, normal and abnormal, beautiful people. Okay. But, yes, there's, like, three uh, quarters, okay, that are total weirdos. And they're not even – I'm not even going to put that on L.A. Some of them – well, yes, they are, actually. I was going to say, damn. The ones, oh, I need to just shut up now before I get blocked. But it's, yeah, the ones that are from here, they're a little different, honey. The people that I meet in California that aren't from California, they're more tolerable. So push through, Texas. Okay. Um, guardian of family, tribe, activism, and ritual. Be on the outlook for all that shit. The wolf's mission is to uphold the well-being and longevity of the pact, okay, or pack, okay. Healthy wolf energy expresses itself through activism, mentorship, humanitarian efforts, or teaching. Notice how the, those things came up. Express yourself. Activism came up. Mentorship came up. Humanitarian things came up and teaching are all influences that I've went over last week and that are still active this week. Yes, 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 Okay. It also talks about children walking in their parents' footsteps. Be mindful of that. Although it will surely be uncomfortable at first, practicing tolerance helps balance out agitated wolf energy. Ding, ding, ding. Okay. Um, when in balance, reliable, uh, democratic, and fearless. Okay. I just felt insulted. I'm not going to lie. I'm not. I'm a millennial. Okay. I don't mean to get all Gen Z on you guys, but just political. <laughs> I don't like that this, this book threw out that political word. Okay. I'm not a Democrat. And it just like made me talk about it. I just feel some kind of way. Don't they just complain about everything? I don't know if it's Gen Z, but then people that be like, don't identify me. And it's like, are you kidding? Let me shut up before I get blocked. So then. It says, when out of balance could be judgmental and dominating. To bring in balance, practice letting go. So I didn't want to talk about it. I think I touched on it for a few seconds. If you listen to this reading twice, you may hear me say it. But there could be a judgmental, biased, mean bastard motherfucker in your horizon. I hope it ain't you and you feel insulted that I just said them words to you. We can't see each other, so we can act like it never happened. And you can still love me tomorrow because I love you. But there may be others in your environment. Okay, because I think you came in with this energy and I did see this potentially in a challenging energy. So some of us, the change in luck is going to come from what we insert mentally and energetically as well as subconsciously into this will. Hmm. Now, others of you, it's like if there is a will that got your name in it, it might not be as big as a payment as you thought it would be. Or you have to pay off some debts. Some of you may receive some money from somebody paying off a debt. Like, they owe you some money. You know how it is. When they come up for an inheritance or something like that, they check child support. They check lawsuits, all kind of shit. And you could get your little old payment from uh, help. See? Support. That you didn't even know you got wish fulfillment through some random support. I like that. A lot. Okay. So, 
Whew. All right, I want to start with this 21 over here. So 10, that is crazy that it's like 10 as in the metal, and we have the number 10 as in the Wheel of Fortune. Um, I just like putting shit together. Maybe it doesn't go. Maybe it does. Let me be great. But it's over there with Taurus. Taurus is coming up later um, during the week, the very end of the week. But it says expansive. Oh, shit. Guess what else? Jupiter. So you got multiple. You didn't have Jupiter come up because of the conjunction. I'm throwing Jupiter in there, which is where this change is going to come from. So it's possibly favorable. Then you have the actual Jupiter card there. And then 10. I'm fucking with it. 10 is a silver, silver, silvery, white, highly malleable metal. This is in part because tin structure is composed of crystals and cubic and tetragonal formations that can be broken and crushed under moderate pressure. I don't like that. We're not going to crack under pressure, but it says when the crystalline structure breaks, a sound known as the tin cry can be heard. Hence, the unnerving sound of crunching tin foil. Yep, we all have heard that like a screeching fingernail across the chalkboard. Such is the energy of the tin card on one hand. It is intense Jupiterian nature to expand. My philanthropists and my givers here, okay? But it also talks about cannot withstand much weight or pressure. When this card appears, you may have reached a limit or a breaking point after taking on more than is logically possible under the circumstances. Don't take this juncture personally. More strength is required before taking next, next steps to support the expansion you see in your mind's eye, Okay? So let's see. Jupiter comes in like, okay, you know, don't don't run them all off because I am here. That may not be what's necessary for the majority, maybe for someone. But let's see what Jupiter has to say about that. Jupiter, come defend yourself. It says possibility, fortune and expansion. It also says Jupiter is often a welcome sight emerging from the darkness, shimmering with possibilities. And didn't I say it's a lot of like shadowy cards? Remember I said that and you got a little bit of light and how I respected her for being honest about that. Um, there's that. It also says when this card appears, the future is full and bright. Now, see, this is in our minds. So some of us are self-sabotaging. I, this our mind says that oh maybe i did too much or i can't do too much or i can't go too far or i don't know i got this extra couple of dollars but i might need to hold on for xyz elemental p jupiter in the physical right right here in the physical lineup it does say what it said it says the future is full and bright perhaps even dazzling everyone wants to be around jupiter and energy and to claim a little for themselves so there is likely a magnetic feeling at play the work is to keep your bigness in balance so that is cons consistent keep it in balance during the wave of expansion that's taking place and then you have rebirth transformation regeneration from things that we were in the in-between and juggling with into things that we're happy about wish fulfillment about bliss and balanced about got a little coins about and moving into more coins i like that now, over here to the left, where our shadowy Queen of Cups is pointing, all right, what's bothering her? Because she looks a little bothered. It says, holding, adhering, surrounding. Resin is a miraculous material. It often bolts uh, stability and transparency. It offers both stability and transparency. For centuries, sculptors and activists have used it to capture an object in time and place, preserving it for observation or adoration. Envision a delicate insect or flower suspended in a paperweight, such as the alchemical ener energy of resin. Its qualities are protective, sealing, and hardening. When this card appears, there is a holding that is occurring, either literally or physically. Now, don't be holding my money. Don't be putting none of my accounts on hold. Okay? But if we're holding on to something we can let go of, I can't tell you what to do. But, I mean, she looked bothered. So... There's that. It says there may be an aspect of nostalgia at work in the laboratory and unwillingness to let go or change. See, see this conjunction and this Jupiter is over here with this here, though. So just pointing that out. And it says air. So in our thoughts or that motherfucking air sign, I ain't holding on to no air signs. <laughs> 
Uh, deadly pray shit. Shout out to the Gemini's though. I want a Leo. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you have chaos here. And it talks about spinning. You got this wheel spinning too. It talks about being disoriented and groundless. And then they got Scorpio over it with transformative. So maybe those are some of the things that we need to transform and or how it could feel during some of these transformations. I don't know. When an alchemist sits in the laboratory amidst the pressure or presence of confusion, which is chaos, something miraculous is bound to occur. Well, I like that. That's because this card, this state is so powerful and all encompassing that it typically overwhelms the student to point of despair. Didn't you have another despair card? Damn it. Was it the four of cups and the nine of swords? Mm hmm. Over here, right crossing it, too. Look at that. I'll tell you. <sighs> Such is the nature of chaos. It is the grand trickster, the topsy-turvy confusion that turns life on its head and spins a web not even the wisest mystic can untangle. Baffling, yes. Disorienting, also, yes. But the seasoned alchemist recognizes it as the most potent point in the alchemical experiment. Wait. Observe. Do nothing. It is destiny itself that spins the web. Clarity will emerge one strand at a time. Your only task is to breathe. Do not struggle. The three fates hold you in their sights as you free fall forward into freedom. So some of us coming out of debt. Now, Scorpio on top of this card does talk about debt. Could talk about karma. Could talk about what Scorpio falls in your chart. This, on the other hand, as the outcome and the advice talks about uh, freedom. It, it did say moving forward into financial freedom, and this one didn't. But did you hear that? <sighs> yes, yes, yes. I take that freedom. Yes, I do. Well, I got all I love my matted cards. Oh, pray for me about that. Okay. What did I miss? Nothing. This was great. So, like I said, I'm going to get the transits um, so we can be... Yeah, I mean, just if you're into it. If you like horoscope, I can... Or even just to learn. Some of you... Maybe content creators or just want to know. We will talk specifically about the transits because there's enough of them to do a video on. Uh, I'll say that it's like five to ten of the motherfuckers. Six may matter. Uh, we'll talk about them. And they will hold you through not only this week, but some of them move through May. I didn't want to go too far, but I didn't want to be the last one to tell you about them. So I'll put them in this week's um I always want to say podcast broadcast because we ain't podding shit. It's a broad <laughs> it's a broadcast. OK, definitely appreciate you guys again. Don't forget to hit the like button for more information on products and services. Go to Pisces TV dot com. And I love you. If no one else has told you today, I love you. And thank you for being here. <laughs>